this is Mioga Ginger, which as you can tell, looks very, very different than this, even though they are very closely related. Why is that? This is a root, this is a flower. Yeah, so many different parts of ginger plants are edible. This is what we normally think about when we think of ginger. There's also relatives of this thing, like the uh, galangal, which is used in Thai cooking. The flowers are also edible, as well as the stems. They can be used in cooking. And if you uh, have been watching my series for a while, you may have noticed that I have talked about ginger fruits before. There's the torch ginger, there's some random little ginger I had in Borneo, and uh, Madagascar, I found a ginger, where they use the fruit of it, usually in cooking, to add flavor. And the seeds are also used to make uh, spices. So, grains of paradise, that is in the ginger family. Uh, Madagascar wild cardamom. And also, regular cardamom is in the ginger family. Uh, different genus, but same family. So, uh, yeah, ginger has a lot more to it than just this thing. And what I'd like to talk about today is the flower. This is a special kind that is used in Japan. The Mioga ginger is used in a lot of different ways. People use it as a garnish. You could also cut this up and put it into soups. Very popular for that. And it's also something people will just cut and saute or deep fry. By the way, this was sent to me by Matt and Megan from Seattle, so check out the link to Wanderlust Nursery if you are interested in growing this or other plants. There's the inside. It's got a bunch of like little Looks like little scallion stalks, like all, all together. It smells a little bit like, actually a little bit like scallion, but very, very mild. It doesn't have a very strong scent to it. I was expecting this to be very aromatic, just because uh, every part of ginger I've had so far on this channel has been uh, very, very strong. Fruit, seeds, roots, always has a big punch, but this one doesn't smell like it's going to be that strong. So I'm going to cut off a few slices of it and just give it a go. Hmm. Doesn't smell like it's going to have a kick, but that definitely does have a kick. That reminds me of the, um, the wild Madagascar ginger fruit that I had. It's peppery. It's a little bit oniony. It's got like the heat of ginger but not really the flavor of ginger. You know how like, if you eat a lot of ginger, it's like, it feels hot. Maybe like a little bit like horseradish or something. It's giving me like a little bit of that flush, like a little bit of heat, but not a ton. But that kick is not quite as much as the root or cardamom. The texture on it is nice and crispy. It's a little bit like, you know, how scallion will be a little bit crispy. You might want to put that fresh on a soup rather than cook it, right? So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a bowl of miso soup and let's see how it goes on that. Okay, so I have some water here on high heat. I'm going to take a little bit of that flour and just throw it into the water so it can infuse a little bit. Next, uh, hefty spoonful of miso paste is gonna go in there. Gonna let that dissolve a bit. Alright, the water is boiling and they're doing construction next door. So if you set, if you hear like grinding metal, that's why you're hearing that. So it looks like the miso is all dissolved. I'm going to throw in a noodle cake. And a fistful of textured vegetable protein clumps and let that cook for a few minutes. Now if you're wondering if this is a cooking channel, you are... Uh, I know it seems like that, but it's not. It's not. So this is probably not what people normally do. This is just what I like to do. This is my version of like a very slightly more adult uh, ramen noodle dish but instead of uh, what I usually would do is put a bunch of spices in it, I'm only putting the ginger in there. So it will only have that, uh, that flavor 
and I'll see if it changes the, uh, the taste. And I'm going to top it off with more of that ginger, but this time raw. Yeah, it does impart a little bit of flavor. I think a lot of it ends up being lost when it's cooked, though. So let's try a little bit with some of those pieces on top. Mm -hmm. That has more of a punch. It oddly has a little bit of, um, I want to say like a little bit of like a Szechuan pepper kind of feel to it. Though not nearly as pungent. It just has like a little bit of the, um, the tartness that you'd get from Szechuan pepper. Like a little bit like a citrus sort of, uh, sort of vibe to it. Try some of these noodles. Mm -hmm. It's good. I'm gonna go and enjoy my lunch, everybody. But I think that this is uh, very useful as a garnish. If you're the sort of person who likes to use fresh herbs, if you like using fresh cilantro and fresh scallion in your food, this is a great tool to have. It gives a nice refreshing taste and texture, but the flavor is completely different, but in a similar kind of category. So definitely worth checking out if you like that sort of thing. And thanks again to Matt and Megan for sending me this. Uh, check out their website, wanderlustnursery.com. And um, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hey, before you click out, I want to give a very special thank you to AltPod, Smarter Every Day, and the Harbor Leaf Tea Company. They are mega patrons over on Patreon.com. Uh, Patreon.com, if you haven't heard of it, it is how this channel happens. It's how I get all the funding to go on the trips I go on and how I get all the fruit that I try. So if you're interested in supporting my channel, uh, check out the link in the description below. Uh, another thing is that I have t-shirts for sale. Those are also available in the description below as well. Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye.